There was a bit of a la de delay. Sorry about that, guys. But we are live. It's MBR versus Chaos. First map. It's going to be overpass. MBR starting on the CT side. Chaos looks like they're gonna some util out potentially here. do a little late B hit. Fur has the info though, so they're gonna be able to play three and a half to four people B. Mm. These are always interesting when you kind of spot some info monster early round. Like, where do we go from here now? Do we still hit B? They're probably going to have four here. So you actually see, see since first pushed through, he still doesn't have info on blue. So that's the one caveat here is uh, the oh. connector. They could be falling back through, and that's not ideal. Type one in the chat, boys and girls. Leaf. I'm excited for this, man. Do you guys know that he left CSGO for Valorant? Just a couple weeks ago, and then now he's back to CS:GO. I so I I, I talked about this a little bit. He's popping air. heads right here as they yeah. take egg. He didn't even have a profile photo on Angel TV, man. <laughs> like it's completely unknown. That's how new he is. Okay, he does get taken out though. But chaos of a man right now. Three versus two in a post plant. This is good. Okay, vanity. There you are. Yeah, kind of a swift. That was the that was the one kind of opening there. Fur gets map control, but then the connectors, the connector is like the weak spot, right? So they had a guy rotate back to A, but he gets gooshed. Then Lee starts flying up short A, and then the round's kind of over because they rotates B. Wasn't fully over, but that's why that truck position is so powerful and pissed around when you just hide at the angle. Yeah, you go for initial peek. Just the people cross coming fire. out headshot. They yeah. have like four things to look at, and you just peek whatever you want. But this round is not a gimme on overpass here in the second round. If you're not careful, you can uh, get picked for running peeking long. We got a, a scout over there on Fallen with a triple nade classy. Oh, I was going to say, normally when you do rounds like these, it could get a little bit dicey, but doing a pretty good job here so far, Chaos. I kind of like how they just threw the nades and went, right? Yeah. Because I could see them like throwing the nades and then trying to go back and like take long A and like someone gets killed somewhere. And well, at least then you kind of nade it right, and then even if you just get the one expo flash, you kind of know that that area is at least clear, so you can just focus on, for example, the bomb site coming into it, yeah. and then just hold Barrel graffiti after. Killer, yeah. I feel like that hit was extra dry for Chaos, though. The flashes it came super. Yeah, late. I, I didn't. I was expecting like a full blown execute, but I think after HE, I think maybe we saw the one flash. I guess it's fine, mm -hmm. but we're seeing the effect probably of Steel not being in the server, quite frankly. Mm. Um, just, you know, they're probably just trying to simplify everything, oh. and occasionally one guy will be a little ahead of tempo. Mm -hmm. You know, someone's a little excited to get right. out there and frag Josh. Daddy Josh isn't in the server telling him not to. <laughs> exactly, and especially when you're a new team, it's so much easier for like an game leader to just be like, "Hey, let's do this, and I'll throw the flash," because then you know exactly where you want you. Just throw it yourself instead of be like, hey, let's go be. Hey, I want someone to throw this flash over here and be like, oh, is this okay? And then you spend like five, ten seconds talking about it when in reality you should spend like, just throw a goddamn flash, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Are we uh, just beyond the summit? Is that the link we're at right now? I'm going to share the URL on Twitter. So that's a very. Why don't you quote retweet? I think it's BTS CSGO. I want to yeah. say. Okay. It's yeah. right. Quote tweet 2 0. Low buy. This is why we could talk this round because they have pistols. That's the benefit of this broadcast. You could ask me what I ate today. What did you eat today, Jordan? My friend uh, stayed at his place. He gave me a uh, little cheesy al gratin potatoes with some scrambled eggs for breakfast. Yum. It's pretty solid. If people are not aware, Jordan is an insane cook and he does a lot of fancy stuff on his Instagram. <laughs> it's absolutely He's insane. He's copying other people. You no, know? it doesn't. It, it, copying or not, man, you make it look nice. Like it makes, uh, I, I, I'm get hungry every time I look at it. <laughs> That's a big compliment. That is a big compliment. Maybe one day I'll learn how to do the oral board or whatever it's called. The, the Jules board. The oral board. There you go. The Swedish. The experience you got at. Uh, but that uh, fish stuff I had. I wanted the Dreamax when oh you were man. still in Cloud9. You got a little Christmas party. That was so cool. I saw it. I was actually a little bit jealous. It's cool that you guys <laughs> got that experience. You're like, I've never got that. <laughs> 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 I mean, listen, I didn't even get paid, so I mean, you can't, you can't ask for too much. Yeah, at that point, you're just like, can I get dinner yeah, yeah. out here? <laughs> I'm going, I'm slaving away. We're boot camping. Come on, man. A company car just used for cars? <laughs> All right. All right first <laughs> weapon. No, I mean, listen. <laughs> <laughs> We're we have the first weapon on at least, though. 
I've been out of the scene a little bit, just like not watching. I'm gonna just start offending people, not even knowing things. I'm saying stuff. So. Oh, did do you? You've you missed a bunch. <laughs> you missed a bunch. I paid attention to your stuff. That was fun. No, I mean that was a long time ago. Yeah. Now we have, we have new drama. I, I, I saw the following thing the other day. I was missing. I was like, listen, admins, make a decision. <laughs> yeah. There's a rule book. For I reason. yeah. I Anyways. I don't know what. I don't know what I what cool. I. Let's talk about Fur's aggression for the last seven years. <laughs> Overpass and fur and aggression. These three things always go hand in hand. And the man oh, single-handedly does this kind of stuff constantly, but there is somebody <laughs> who snuck in playground behind him. So even though they got the five v four advantage, this could turn into a little kind of qu questionable map control deal. Like where do they move now? Because they thought fur was happening, but fall is fall is still in a close position, and it's not one point six. Can you th see through the bottom of the wall? Yeah. A little bit. People have gotten Ooh. really good with seeing through smokes and stuff nowadays. Z if Zappa only knew, he would be walking his dog straight up into that bomb site. This is going to be oh, awkward with Paul. And John G, previous OGC member there, getting a frag. Really? You don't remember? No, I don't. Wait, well, he played with us? And not with me, for sure. Maybe. I would have remembered, I think. You were busy, like, working. <laughs> I mean. Working and doing stupid stuff. Was I really around, you know what I mean? I was there, but was I? Big 3v1 here, and now Chaos, without Joshua Steele, Nissan Josh, if you're listening, they might be better without you. <laughs> you know, like, is, is that early to take? <laughs> the, Ooh. Look, I, there's one thing, one caveat for Chaos here is that Vanity Four does a in. lot of the does a lot of the second second voice calling for Ooh, Chaos, okay. even when Steele is playing. If you listen in on their content on YouTube, you can hear their in-game calls, and actually it's Vanity who's making a lot of those mid-round mm. calls, a lot of the mid-round decisions. So mm. I wouldn't be surprised if he's the one IGLing here, even over M. CE, who's their coach? So, mm. I mean, this is definitely a good look for Chaos right off the bat. But MIBR, they're kind of known for having a slow start. I think into series, like they like they like right. to make it a challenge for themselves. They like to kind of claw their way back into series. So I wouldn't be surprised if MIBR kind of wake up here pretty soon. But Chaos, I mean, this is definitely definitely the start that they were looking for. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the whole thing with first aggression, for example, and it's actually something. I mean, on this map especially, because I think. There, it, the map is just so big to a point in which like the T's in order to take map control like you either just take B short right and, and then you just have the guy just holding A ramp essentially and it opens up a lot of space for CT's and one of the Brolan does that a lot for Fnatic as well he's up here in mid a lot just like creating space you know getting an information peak or something you don't even, ha even necessarily have to get a kill if you want but it's just the information of like they're not even up here yet you know you're, they're probably waiting for connector there might be a B pop or whatever but it's just so much information you're really gaining so this, to me, is a very slow map to play. Um, and it's a really methodical map. But again here, Chaos. Ooh. It's all falling apart. But we do know that it was a half buy from Emma BR. Just some scouts, pistols. Vanity all alone with this expensive ass AWP. This might punish him. I like the patience coming out of chaos right now, though. They're it's being great. Very it, thorough. Yeah, since they don't know where they are right now, you see as well. It's very smart from Vanity. He's going up to A just to fake a little bit. He might even just like tr choose to die or just straight up walk here. Yeah, he's gonna clear it by himself. He's gonna see no one's here. The call is either made. It's 40 seconds left. They can just rotate back if they want, or him just calling to wait and then obviously tr to try and flank. Very patient play from Chaos. Pretty smart here. We'll see if MVR. Does Gabriel just have a one of the hairs stand up on his neck right here? Just and turn around. Yeah, <laughs> super stable, super solid. I love that. It's actually one of the things as well. Like for example, a team like Furia does really well with like d working the rotation so well on this map. Even though you say like, oh, it's only 30 seconds left, just so you know the comms start getting a little bit more chaotic. And you still get to rotate because a play like Vanity there, even if the guys end up pushing B, just the fact that you have all of A already, you just fall back. But if this was your team, Robin, would you prefer that your team just go to A where the site is guaranteed clear? Or it depends because, like, for example, this one, I think they just wanted to go up to go and B anyway because they have no other. He had the information that no one's on site, but he doesn't know if they're bathroom, he doesn't know if mm -hmm. they're A long, he doesn't know any of that, and he doesn't know if they've pushed up in middle on him behind him. So if the rotation comes and they fall back, they just might, you might be caught off guard. Whereas for B, there's two guys left only, right? And they're just holding all the spots. So I think I would probably have just preferred the same. Mm -hmm. If it was a 4v4, I would probably I would have said back. But it definitely d depends on the um, on the situation of the round. 
You do see a change of pace here though from MIBR, not going as aggressive this time around to go for the entry. They'd rather just wait for Chaos to make their first move. Interesting, very deep smoke. And then as I had mentioned initially, look at the radar and you look at when I talked about, you know, the creation of space. Look at A, it's very open, right? So for MIBR, if they want to try and push, there's a lot of space to be made. Now they're not, they're playing very defensive, so for them, they have no information what's going on in the map currently. They know they're being pushed out at B, they know they're getting about to get pushed out at A, they have no space. Actually, Fur, though. He's gonna probably get, might get an expo flash over this. Oh. Here's the common, but falls back instead. This is also I'm a very... waiting for this moment. It's a very common move nowadays with the smoke, uh, with the flash through the smoke once it's fading. So a lot of people are aware, as you see. Um, you don't see a lot of teams ever running through that smoke nowadays. Oh boy! So much damage, but he just didn't have the outline of any one player. And now it's last oh. up, but KNG falls to Vanity. These trades for Chaos are solid here. They're playing great, honestly. They're doing such a good job with taking map control and taking their time, and then just focus on the one spot. And as you said, getting the trades is so important, and they are. And it just opens up the map completely again, forcing MABR on a save. 6-0. Yeah, definitely in another world, I mean, Fur, that's an easy 2k for him, but... When, uh, Chaos's spacing was great there. They, they moved around, made it as hard as possible for Fur, and... They take away another round here. We're at a 6-0 here, guys. Mm-hmm. Well, you said MBR slow starters, and on top of that, I think that a lot of the things as well that we might see, I mean, might be different in NA since these guys, as you mentioned, just play each, uh, against each other in every single tournament. Mm -hmm. But it might also just be, oh, you know, you take out the win in advance a little bit of like, oh, they have the stand in, you know, with their coach. Uh, we should win this game. Let's focus on the next. Now, thankfully, it's not just the best of one, so it's not going to be a, a complete upset in that regard, even if Chaos ends up winning this one. This is their map pick. we we'll see another buy round. We don't have an op this time around though. On Fallen ends up getting the Famas instead with Utility. we we'll see a little boost here. Initially. But again, I also really like this from Chaos in the sense of like, you don't really need to do much. If you notice as well that MBR is a team that just really likes to go for these peaks, uh, then just play default. Just play a slow defaults and just see where they're coming. And if they're not doing stuff, you only spend like 20, 30 seconds just playing defensively. And then here you see they're still taking the map control. Granted, he smoked this off now, get B short, and it's only been 40 seconds. So still very methodical. Nice little frag there from Taco, but it's up being a little bit low. Only two on the b bombs at this time, though, for MBR. It's funny, because I talked about Train having an effect to be able to do this kind of stuff. But really, they're doing it on an overpass. Ooh. Chaos is finding good map control, and they're finding these fights that they like. And uh, this 4v5 has turned back into a 4v4 here, as they're on the bomb site with the potential to get positive trades here. And boom, just like that, they're in a great position to win this round. They are low on HP on one guy, but this is a 3v2 where positional advantage means everything. That's the young gun confidence I talked about. I mean, Leaf, he got drive-by dinked by, I believe that was Fur, and he still kept Wing. He had 3 HP, but he knew that his teammates were corralling into the side, and TRK does get taken down, and it just makes this round an impossible situation for KNG. I think he's just going to be looking for some sort of damage control here. But wow, Chaos, once again, coming out on top. Nice, nice pathing and routing towards that B bomb site and it just gave them every advantage. And look at it this way as well. It hasn't even been close. Yeah. You know, the rounds. Like, look, like four four deaths and that's on MC, the coach. Other than that, it's been very stable. Yeah. I mean, uh, just look at the money also on mm. Chaos's side. Everyone over 10k, 7-0 up. Yep. I so it's, so I, I always talk about it, especially like when you start off like this, for example, like you really want to just have a conversation of what's going on with the other team, right? Like what are they doing? Like if I'm an MIBR here, my in instant thing would be we don't have to push, right? Like at Chaos are not doing anything. They're literally just holding. They're mm. just waiting for us to make the move and for them to get entries. Just wait and see what you're doing. Just see if, there's, if they're taking control of B. You know there's a lot of openings here as well. You can kind of go on that. Granted, it's a semi-buy. 
Uh, we might see some aggression here, but I would love for MBR to kind of play it a little bit more defense, a little bit more structured, like play the rotations a little bit more. Utilize the players. See SG. Um, we don't really see it anymore in Europe. I don't know. I still think it has a spa I, I still think it has a, a spot in in the game. Uh, it's definitely obviously not as strong as it was before, but I still think it's a very good weapon if you're going in a third, for example, to just like dot, you know, like bup, 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 insta headshots. It's a very powerful weapon in that regard. Uh oh, fur. <laughs> I just got a comment from Joshua Steel Nissan himself saying. Maybe these guys are better off without me. Oh, man. <laughs> man. <laughs> Don't say that, Josh. You've done a lot of work with the team, you know. Should be, you should be proud. You should be a proud father. You should be happy. <clears throat> you know, since you have him on the line, I can, I, I'll give him another shout-out because I, I know one of the things that Josh does well, uh, and this sounds obviously ridiculous, but, like, when it comes to, like, probably, you know, when he says, like, go or whatever and something, someone doesn't do it, when you had mentioned, oh, he's still running it with 3 HP, had he not running with 3 HP, I bet you that Josh would be on his ass about running in with 3 HP. You know what I mean? Like, what? We're running, you know, trust the flashes, trust your yeah. trust your mates. We're going to be trading, you know? Yeah. That one more bullet that it takes to kill you, like, I'll get to trade for that. This is bigger than you. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> I don't care if you die. <laughs> There's no I in team. That's what Michael Jordan replies and says, but there is in win. <laughs> I heard he did that. Oh, well. To one of his, really? his can't like, argue right with that. Coach you can't something. argue did with that. Did he say that? Yeah, coach? Like, one of the players is talking about like the ball movement, and he's like, do you know I'm team or something? Someone will correct me in the broadcast. but They uh, always I do. Just, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, just, I mean, I heard it from someone who heard it, you know, that kind of deal. Yeah, so. yeah. Okay. I mean, that's cocky. I like that. He's just like, that's the mentality of a winner. It is. It can be scary. Of a, of a selfish winner? <laughs> yeah. It can be scary. <laughs> But when you got someone just carrying the load, yeah, anyways. But it's always truly is a team game. Yeah. Insert Ooh. poetic quote. I was I was just going to say, let's see what the answer was from MBR from the timeout. And here you kind of see the the answer. You have Fur being very fast on the rotating connector, playing defensive, and then you have three towards B. Well, now a more info to shift. Yeah, and now obviously Chaos, again, very good job in clearing the, the map and getting the map control to get the kill on Fur. And now all of a sudden what happens? Fallen is kind of forced to still play aggressive because they're still doing the three on B. So very good opening from Chaos, taking their time. I'm I'm worried for MBR here. I think that here, I mean, Fallen needs a really good round of some info play. I would wish for MBR to actually, yeah, I was going to say, they need to get an info play here. That, that's exactly what they needed to do. Obviously, you know, it sucks that they ended up getting losing another member, but they get some information. I would like to see maybe MC, yeah, just prod here early. Um, and, and, and that's, I think, a good play that you need to do because if they're not opting the pillar and you're able to get a little ground, it probably pulls some movement, and that's, you just don't know otherwise. So, still winnable two versus three. If they kind of are able to prod somewhere and get a kill, maybe as they're moving up for the retake, maybe get aggressive on spawn stairs, I would like to see. But I understand why they're not. They, they're they trying to just find a, oh, a kill in the open. timing. But now Leaf is stuck between rock and a hard place. And uh, those leaves on the ground making him feel at home as he <laughs> looks at there. It's not planted for him. Oh, oh boy. He doesn't have a kit either. Oh he boy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and <laughs> powered it by the leaves of Overpass, he found Solace in that little corner. And, uh, the, the, you know, I, for a second I was like, is this Valorant? Does Taco have time to come off? He hit the half defuse point already. Is it? <laughs> is yeah. It <laughs> you know, like. I'm glad I saw the replay there because I was going to say... Was I it wonder a kit? No, no one had a kit out of the three. Uh. Uh, so obviously Taco just ends up sticking it. I was going to say because MBR I actually think they do a really good job th there that round. They lose the, the man early with Fur yeah. losing connector. But like the whole thing of, you know, they flash over short to take it control. Even though they trade, they just get some information. And then obviously MC goes down. Fallen does a good job on the, you know, on the kill there too. They're in a good position. And then obviously after plant, uh, the retake three versus two, no kit. Nice round by Leaf, but yeah, definitely a little bit sloppy there from MBR. Yeah. Oh, such a nice recovery as well. That's a feels bad, but Fur once again in T stairs, flanking Chaos. Oh, just the one for Fur. Oh. 
Almost. Still winnable here. Love to see uh, maybe a, a little 1D here from Taco. We'll see if it happens. Chaos though, taking their time. Slow and steady. Strongs like these as well from MBR is like, well, two pistols. You're just holding something. The odds of like TRK. Oh, oh. you almost got the. Oh, no. Nope. I that was gonna say. Insane if yeah. that AK blew to him. So I never really like the positioning like that when you're like CT. Even though it's like three on two, like you have the deagle and you could get one shots like that. Sure, fair enough. But like if they do hit the bomb side and you're not stacking for him, like TRK there, maybe he gets the first if they do a good job. But you should honestly maybe not even get a single one there if they, if they do a better job and then you're just all alone with Taco and then you're not getting anything done. Yeah. We'll see. We just have the one timeout so far. We saw a swap at least from uh, the MBR side on the other round. Did not end up winning that one anyway, but they have swapped a little bit in terms of how they like to play. I think they've noticed that Chaos do like to take a little bit slow. Once again, double ops coming out for MIBR side. I believe the last round when, when they almost had that recovery, they had the dual ops as well. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, it makes sense. I feel like that's one of the go-tos as well when you also have KNG and Fallen at the same time. Nice kill there. Nice little aggression play. That's what I wanted from MIBR. Just getting an entry. It's something we really haven't seen them have almost the whole half. Yeah. It's always been chaos getting the lead with the 5v4s and stuff and MIBR just trying to, to hunt for an extra kill. So we'll see. It's 5v4 now. Leaf has found so much success towards this monster and does so much damage to Fallen, but at this point I think he's got to wait for a flash or fall back and he chooses to fall back here, but ooh, Zeppa, he really wanted to take an advantage. He thought that most of the MIBR guys would be over-rotating towards that B, but Fallen, he's got the discipline. He's not going to move. Nice combo from Taco there. Yeah, it should be MBR's first round on the board. He's a coach, Robin. Yeah, we saw that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no hate, no hate. I think the way they've been doing, you know, all props to him and Josh and Vanity for, for these calls that we're seeing right now. It's looking very solid. Definitely. Let's see here if Amber can build up some bank. Maybe get a few more rounds on the board here. Uh, we, we always say it, but yeah, I mean, I they need the, the last four. Um, even if this is a little bit shaky in the sense of like, could be T side, could be C to side, depending on how it is. But this is not how you want to want to start off the series with. Ooh, monster rush. Johnji just holding down that W. Taco so low, so that's a solid trade coming out of Zeppa, but this boost from TRK is paying huge dividends. I like Zeppa's positioning here, though, but he's got to be aware of this hat. Oh. There it is. That's, that's the pick that changes a lot for Chaos here. Yeah, now all of a sudden it gets really difficult. Ooh. Wow. I love the change of pace there from Chaos. Yeah. Don't even pull a time over to say, hey, listen, we've been playing slow the whole half. Like, they're just, they're holding nades now. Let's just go some somewhere fast. Uh, yeah, buy the Mac 10 on, on Janji and just, you know, W. Let's let's do it. And I love that. And now there's a change of pace. Now, if you're Chaos, you can just go back to playing def de defense again and then for, or defensive again. And from MBR, you're probably going to be seeing a little bit more nades being used now in the beginning of the round, trying to hold off on a potential extra push. Um, I'm hoping to see that we don't see them from MBR. Play it a little bit cool. Just take it as it is. Just a, like a little combo breaker of like change the pace for for chaos. First had enough. <laughs> I, I I do I do appreciate, and it's the same thing with Ballon. Just the fact that they just keep pushing, even though they're they're you know at a at disadvantage. They're not winning the rounds. You know, it's obviously your play style. If you end up not doing that and you end up playing a defensive, like you're taken away from like your strengths, right? So I just love the the just constant aggression from Fur. It's a constant nuisance for the T's as well to just always they kind of like looking over your shoulder, are like, oh, are they going to push or not? I think MCE was trying to make some noise cues there on that ladder.
can see a lot of communication is happening on the chaos side of things right now. I'm trying to formulate a plan to win this, but MIBR, they've read them. Look at all the movement coming out of the CT defenders. They've they've read them here, guys. This is going to be a tough one for chaos. And finally, uh, looks like MIBR's on the right Oops, side yeah. of the map when the hit has come, and Chaos wasn't able to trade here, but not to worry about it as we're moving into an 11-2 scoreline going into the last couple rounds of this half. We talk about timing, and there obviously it's very apparent that Chaos just completely whiffs their timing. MIBR does a really good job in taking uh, short B control again. They flash over and they have two guys there, so they know it's completely safe. So they make the call, hey, they're not they're not short. Yeah, they could be monster, but then at least we have this control that we can boost and we can do whatever. Let's just go 3A. And then with the timing, then obviously for Chaos, it's been very quiet on the map. And Fallen kind of like somewhat saw them a little bit. So yeah, good read by MIBR, good comms. Nice little mid-round aggression Stand as well. Stand in tune with the heartbeat of yeah. the game, even if they're losing these rounds. Yeah, and it's the mid-round mid -round aggression that I was talking about as well. We haven't really seen that pay off for MIBR uh, until the last round. It's really something that's been hammering them a little bit with these like the slow rounds that Chaos has been doing. Because you're, you're going up against like a 5v5 straight up execute. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god! Chanji, you're insane! Chanji! For a second, I thought he got another one that killed, but it was Leaf getting another <laughs> kill on the other side of the map. The and MCE making a great decision to sit here and, uh, you know, let's just stay, let's just eyes peeled here. Let's give the coach's moment of glory as he's not Aww. able to get the kill, and Fur correctly clears the corner. But uh, it looks like they're just going to be big chilling while Chaos take their 12th round. What a picture-perfect round for Jonji as well. Just a freebie on that second kill for himself. But, I mean, the call in itself to get rewarded in that huge way, I, I'm loving it. I'm loving these calls coming out of Chaos. It seems like they've got a game plan every single round to be able to set each other up for some sort of success, and that success is coming time and time again. Yeah, and 12 rounds now. 12 to 2, obviously. MBR really struggling. It's one of these magic uh, halves as well that you're like, yeah, it looks really nice, even if it goes 13-2. But as soon as you know you win the pistol, there is a potential. There's still, there's always a, a potential, right? Yeah, this was absolutely bonkers. Like, I can't believe, I can't <laughs> believe it. How upsetting is that? Taco's got to be pissed oh, after that man. one. Well, yeah, again here, you know, we. We do have a really good buy on MABR for the last round here. Double ops again on KNG and Fallen. We'll see if we're going to get a little bit more of a fish here from MABR. Going for an entry, maybe. Getting that 4 versus... 5 versus 4, rather. Oh, I like this Aang from Leaf. Oh, he's... Of course KNG is going to re-peak that. Oh, and this is exactly what they wanted. Yeah. You know, 5v4 now. Now you can kind of play just, you know, the man advantage. You go on information. Paul needs 50 Ooh. damage, but gets the kill. Super nice. And now this is a really difficult spot for Chaos. Haven't really taken any control, you know, not even B short. They didn't come from Connect Rider, so it's all, f all three up from mid. Gonna have to see some really nice shots here. Oh, he spotted his shadow. Ooh. Not a fan of that from Fur, but like you said, I think they actually spotted him a little bit, but you have five on three, maybe just play the advantage, but Fallen again doing work. Gets up of KNG as well and gets the last one. 12 to three in favor of Chaos, swapping to the CT on an overpass. Um, I think we're going to a quick break, but we'll be right back with the second half.
And we're back with the second half. Map 1, Chaos versus MABR. Insane half on that T side for Chaos. 12 to 3 is the score. And MABR is looking to um, to wake up a little bit here, to claw their way back. Got a little of that. I think, I think I've talked to you about it before, that T side start sometimes are nice, you know, mm -hmm. uh, especially a map like Overpass. You kind of just get comfortable and you control the, the pace of the game a little bit. And, um, you know, I feel like there was teams who used to actively do the opposite. Like, I remember, like, Vert old Virtus Pro guys would always say, like, if they ever had to start CT on a map like Overpass or Train, they would purposely get kind of, like, obnoxiously aggressive on the first gun round or second gun round mm. just to make your default not have any, like, yeah. standing ground to, to work off of. You see that a lot. It's just I, I feel like it's so common now, like the first weapon round, if you're T, you just do a, a rush somewhere, just like Craig Crone. And it's the same thing for CT. You know, if you're first weapon round, you want to do something like just completely ruins like the T's thought process of like this is the round we want to do. But now I feel like it's gone like it's a little bit more mindset now. Ooh, nice kills there from Taco. Definitely need to get the bomb down. Five on three. John G is also very low. I think that, and that, uh, that's what, this is exactly what I was saying, man, like the 12 to 3, you know, you, you lose the pistol, it kind of seems like the round is a little bit over, <laughs> you get a little bit of freebie there, Vanity gets the knife. You get a little fresh meat off the bone. Yeah, I think, it, but it's, uh, mindset-wise, for Chaos, you know, like, it's very important, yeah, it's 12 to 3 up, but the, this can turn around real quick, you know, we we spent 20 minutes and this scoreline, you just wait 20 more minutes, it might be the same, so, well, we'll see, a little bit, I'm still, obviously, first weapon round, yeah, or first round on the second half, so let's not get carried away here. No, and that's you know, and they they saved their money and they and they got their they got their little knife frag and um, you know that's not a big confidence killer because pistol rounds everyone knows are like 50-50. I feel like um, they definitely sway a lot, a little bit less than they used to, but um, you know, I think sometimes amateurs or specters get cut up with the pistol round a little too much. All right, so I missed the pistol round. Just a plow. And then uh, Vanity got a knife, and we're here. Nice. Wait, he got knifed? Or did he, he, he knifed do the knife? Okay. Oh, so he dropped a A4 over to Zeppa then. That's what it looks like, yeah, so he can grab head armor. Okay. What do you think about this buy, Jordan, from Chaos's side? I think it's very viable, you know. Um, yeah. The way that the scale and economy here, they uh, probably are going to double save regardless, right? And so they're like, okay, well, if we could kill four people right here, we'd be pretty confident that. Or if they just, you know, insta rush B and took it, they'd probably save those guns, and then they could do a single save and buy again. And then if they screwed that one up, and then it's like 12, 8, 12, 9, then they still have time to like get reset and get into the game. Um, so these are worth risks to take. You Sometimes you want to be a little careful. Uh, you'll see some teams just go straight double save just because they want to say, okay, we'll give them 12, 5, 12, 6, but we want to, uh, we want to just have all the economy to get confidence early. So like this could happen, and it's like, do you, you don't have a choice to save now. So you're losing the guns and maybe not getting a kill. Clean round coming out of MIBR. Hardly any even damage taken here. So certainly Chaos had an idea with that buy. It just maybe a little too passive from Zeppa. I feel like he could have been a little bit more close up to his mate and traded off that contact a little bit better. But yeah, this is a nice clean round coming out of MIBR side of things. And Chaos, they're, they're going to have to break savior once again i i love that buy from mibr you get the bomb down and on top that you get some kills you get the well it was a van to get the knife but just the whole thing of like you get ak's as soon as you do that and you get some kills on the board so it's a very strong buy you get this is why like people talk about the whole thing with the economy a little bit um it's like absolutely bonkers you get technically you get a better buy than the ct is there in some in some sense yeah um, so it's very strong. It's, some, it's really something that you really just have to be mindful of on the seat side. As soon as you get the bomb plan, you're just like, hey, watch out for the AK buys. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and just be, you know, maybe you don't buy five five SMGs anymore. Maybe you do have at least a rifle. Um, but yeah, I mean, nice round by MBR. Great to execute on it as well. Definitely needed it on the board. And then Chaos now. 
was going to say on the struggle bus, so obviously full save. But this is exactly the sort of MIBR needed on that T side. Yeah, and if Chaos aren't careful, the tenure and experience of MIBR will slowly claw back into this game. We got 180 years of experience over there in <laughs> MIBR side. I was doing some of the math on my team too, man. I'm like, holy crap. Uh, we're uh, Fallen for Taco K and G. Uh, obviously, TRK being one of their newer members, but those guys all um, have been in this situation a thousand times. So. I had the pleasure of uh, meeting TRK recently. Super nice. Um, obviously, uh, new to the scene in some degree in the professional scene. I, I've, it's been around for a while, but haven't really had a chance to meet him. But he's super nice. Nice young man. Not old like the rest of us. <laughs> it's just been uh, just been over a month now, a month and two days since TRK joined this MIBR lineup. So, hmm. and you can kind of see. Do you feel? Do you feel like has the addition of him is this the tra trajectory up, or have you feel like it's been moving slowly up? But like TRK kind of helped that on against a little bit. You know, I think it. I think it's been moving slowly up, but TRK's maturity. I mean, we mentioned he's a young guy, but he's like twenty. 24 mm. I think so he's certainly been around the block I mean he was in uh, I believe it was Sharks before this lineup and, and he already turned down uh, Immortals to, to stay within his team so he's he's been around the block a little bit but I think his maturity kind of brings a different look for these MIBR guys but we mentioned MIBR having to claw back I mean yesterday in the series versus EG if we think back their first map they were down I believe 7 to 15 and they were able to claw that one back and bring it into OT so MIBR certainly have what it takes to remain composed and and fight their way back in a map and I think we're starting to see just that here because it is really difficult nowadays because you look at the utility even on the CTs versus the T's. The T's here, I mean, we are going to have a really nice execute coming up, you know, with Molly, smokes, and stuff like that. What does Chaos really have to hold this with? You know, a few smokes, one flash, like... All it takes for MMBR to just wait for the one second and have them throw and you're not going to have anything. And all that relies is on straight star play performance now for Chaos if they want to hold this bomb site. Solid hold overall That's here. exactly what we're seeing. Yeah, wow. that's super nice, right? Like, you look at it, Chaos really have nothing to work with. No utility, really. No flashes to work with. MBR are, like, really going through. They go through the smoke as well, get initial. But Chaos, really nice setup. A lot of crossfires and a lot of trades. MBR are really not getting any space to work with there. I think it was actually uh, Team 1, TRK, right? Team 1. Was it Team 1? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, no, okay. it's okay. I didn't want to correct you for sure, but I just I had to double check. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm glad you did. I wouldn't check. have known. I was just trying to think. I was like, I haven't been paying as much attention as you. You have all this data in your head flying <laughs> around. <laughs> Listen, the data gets jumbled up, up a little bit yeah. there, though. <laughs> this is the desk we learn, you know? Yeah, We're yeah. We learners out here. We all talk about it. the analysts are supposed to know what they're talking about. Yes, we do to some extent. But hey, listen, we also learn a thing or two every time we watch <laughs> some stuff, you know? We're not perfect. Yeah. Oh, oh, he gets wow. it too. <laughs> that was was that double wall? Was the door open? I think it was open. It was open, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, that was yeah. the smoke made it open. No, I mean they just they I was like <laughs> they needed wow. open in the beginning. It makes it really difficult Th for the CTs. Like they have to waste the smoke that there. That was like if a first started doing that like eight months ago. I feel like a year ago. It's like this year map is <laughs> like I'm old. the more you think about it, like this map is just very tactical in some degree. There's a lot of like small things you could do. Just the whole thing, you know, like the door thing, opening that every round when it was an HE if you're CT, you never used to see that. But yeah. it makes total sense, right? Because you're like, well, now if you're T, you don't want to go through there because you just get walled. Like you do a lot, like the, the wall bank does a lot of damage. So and you want to use the smoke. And can mind game you if you, keep it, if you keep it open. They can close it and pretend they're not, but someone's camping in water. They force you to clear it, but exactly. if you just have it open. So much easier to spot intermittently with one guy. That, yeah. was, that was some nice proactive movement coming out of the coach MCE. It's definitely not the top of the scoreboard, but he's he's providing some impact and, and intel there. And nice shot from Vanity. Does he get to save this off? Nope. Kanji does get taken out here. And man, this map is turning into quite a dominant look for Chaos here. Already at 14, we spoke about MIBR potentially posturing for a comeback, but... Now they're broke, guys. They don't have much to work with economically here. Yeah, the upsets, at least for the one map, 
continues over in NA. <laughs> we had it in EU for, for quite a few. Say, I mean, I think all the first rounds actually went almost three maps. You know, Fnatic lost a map, Complexity lost a map, I think OG lost a map, Big Lot, like, everyone lost a map. So, like, we're definitely seeing a little bit of a, a few upsets here. Nice aggressive play as well. You know, you gotta be cocky with back SMG. In there. Yeah. Give the coach some frags. Let's go. It's Nico. Let's go. Throw him a flash. You can tell though, he was licking licking himself across the lips. He's like, yeah, yeah. It's throw my me time flash, to yeah. shine. There's two more there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the sound effects. <laughs> <though. laughs> and Fallen finds when he's going to be able to get an op for himself and an AK for a teammate here. And this three versus three uh -oh. would be probably one of their last chances to really get into this game comfortably if they could find something here. But John G's still in a forward position to the point where if they don't work together, he might be able to dismantle everything here. What is it? Is it a smoke and nade on Fallen? Or is it a flash and nade? H and a flash, I think that is. Okay. So he definitely has to go for a peek here. Wait, is that a smoke? <laughs> I think it may might be a smoke. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. But no flash at least, so s same thing there anyway for Fallen. Yeah, he does end up throwing the smoke here. But we're going to be seeing some dry peaks coming in from MBR. Uh oh, Ooh. big kill by Taco there. Now they know that. So everything's going to be in front of them, but Leaf, the young guy you were talking about. Oh, yeah. Leaf. And he ends up going down there. Yeah, Taco ends up getting the kill, but look at the Chaos rotation, right? Like, Chaos had all the players there on the A bomb side already, so, like, even if it goes down, you still have the two playing the bomb side. MBR not aware, um, and just goes into the meat grinder. So, I mean, overall, I think Chaos by far, you know, so far on over and over past least, uh, best team. Um, in terms of just decision making, what they've been doing, I feel like they've just been spot on with all the decisions throughout, even on the CT side now, with the rotation and stuff as Have well. Have you watched them a lot with Steel play this match? No, I, I watched I watched a little bit uh, when I get a chance because I normally sleep during NA hours now, so I never get a chance to watch the NA scene too much. Mm -hmm. That might be a different, interesting conversation. I have some questions for you with how that's been going when we have a little bit of pause in the game action. But right now we're on the final round here, uh, potentially. But Chaos down in a 4v5. And look at the crossfire again with Chaos, right? Oh. Like, it's so nice. You don't even... I, I'm, I'm pretty sure maybe they've talked about it or whatever. This is happening because Chaos is so tight-knit on where they're going. They had one guy in connector already with the crossfire on to B short. They had one guy who was Leaf that pushed in B short as well. You create crossfires all around the map. So even if you end up going down, you get two shots in the back. And it's just... Uh, overall, I think it's just very nice play from Chaos. From MIBR, one of the things we kind of see, and which is what obviously Chaos taking advantage of, is the map control. You know, even there, you take B control, you don't have one guy in connector, what ends up happening is, or you don't take the space, you don't smoke it off, they HE the door, you get a clear line there. So you think it's empty, you get the kill, you're like, oh, let's go B, and then boom, just right in the back. 16-6 score line. I'm very impressed. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> honestly, like, this is the kind of score line. I, I said What's it before. Next uh, dust two. Yeah, Dust2, which is MIBR's map. But I said it before, this is the kind of scoreline. I could definitely see this scoreline if, for example, Josh was playing. Yeah. You know, but now they're using a coach, even though, like, obviously, yeah, decision-making was just spot-on for me, honestly, with this chaos calling on the T side and also on the C T side. And Very the individuals. Impressed. I mean, Leaf, how many times, how many instances, whether it was on CT or T side, he had a multi-kill. He had a 3K off his back. I mean, even in that anti-eco in the second to last round, it was so impactful. If he mm. didn't get those three kills, I mean, Chaos probably probably would have lost that round so certainly some impactful plays coming out uh, across all the individuals it, on chaos right it, now it's just so interesting from the time that i've kind of like stepped out of like actively playing and watching a lot of these teams one of the cool things to me about the scene today is like you know i see these people in the server fallen and fur and talking i have so much respect for them and you know they've beaten me so many times in the server i played them so much they're, they're legendary names but you know there's so many young kids Mm. Leaf up to stuff or Zeppa or all these different <laughs> names that that come in and they're and they they kind of get a little bit of grit and confidence over the years of playing online and sure y you don't that's the one caveat of playing online right now but it's nice that uh, it doesn't seem as random as it seems like the the up and comers are getting more and more um, stable in terms of when they enter the scene at this point of a year it used to take them two three years yeah to mm. feel like they were veteran decision making mm. but it seems like things like fpl and just the way kids are watching cs now it seems like there's a lot more um 
but it's a lot more decision making yeah. early on in their careers. But I think joining a team like this too also creates a lot more structure. Right? Like imagine if you're just a young gun and you get get to like get taught under the reins of like a Josh that's been playing for so long. And right? he's gonna like be he, stern. Yeah, so yeah. You and it's the same thing with MBR and stuff like that, right? Anyway, so they just told me, listen, we're we're not allowed to talk anymore. This guy's pissed off. We have to throw it to a break, but we'll be right back with map number two.